Hello musical teachers and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be talking all about my ostinato music unit and how I teach ostinato to my elementary music students as that is something that I did not really find any good lessons for or ways to teach this over the course of the last few years and so I figured if it's not there I'm gonna make it for myself and figure out a way that I can actually teach ostinato in a way that's easily repeatable and that my students will understand. And so hence I created this five lesson unit and I'm going to walk you through it start to finish. I will have the link for it underneath this video and I even have the introductory lesson free for you in my free resource library which is underneath this video as well. So stay tuned to hear what that includes. For those who don't know me, my name is Brittany Barton. I teach elementary music and musical middle, middle school musical theater in Central Florida. This is my eighth year teaching and I made this channel to help other music teachers instill a love and appreciation in the hearts of music or students everywhere. And we do that through lesson ideas, tips, tricks, strategies, all that fun stuff, and some weekly vlogs. So if you're interested in that, please like and subscribe. You get a new video every Monday and it really helps my channel grow. As I mentioned prior, there were no good resources to really creating an ostinato unit. And so I've learned if there's nothing there, you make it yourself and you share it with others because that is what makes the world go round. So I'm going to walk you through my five lesson unit for ostinato and how I teach it to my students. I use this, I introduce it in second grade. That is what I used it in this year and it actually went really really well. I had a very good success rate with this. It is tried and true. My students loved it. They can easily tell me what an ostinato is and like all the different types and we use ostinato all the time now. If you want to introduce ostinato beforehand like in kinder and first you totally can. I just don't actually teach what an ostinato is and they don't really know but they've had prior experience with it until about second maybe third grade. So let's just dive in to how I teach ostinato. Okay. I'm trying to film this for the second time because my memory card decided to be full and then my hard drive decides to not allow me to move anything. Honestly, I need to get a new hard drive and this is showing that I need to do it ASAP before I lose everything, including wedding stuff, a bunch of my TPT products. This is the life. Anyway, let's talk through my ostinato music unit. Okay, so in lesson one, we basically go through an introduction to ostinato as well as the four types. I do teach four types. I teach melodic, speech, rhythmic, and body percussion. And then we finish with the students actually trying to find the ostinato at the end of the presentation. The best way that I learned how to teach an ostinato is actually a video called Ostinato Explained on YouTube. And it's hilarious. And it's this guy basically just saying over and over along with a little rap in between. An ostinato is a pattern that repeats. What? An ostinato is a pattern that repeats. And he says it literally probably like 30 times in this video. And so my students always remember that. They literally always remember it. They never forget because that is just so addicting. So we talk about an ostinato, it's a pattern that repeats, and then I show an example of what an ostinato can look like, and I just have different videos. I took a lot of time finding videos of ostinatos in popular songs, and then I talk about the four types of ostinato, like I said, melodic, speech, rhythmic, and body percussion, and I show them an example of each one. So for melodic, I show them the Beach Boys, Barbara Ann, the, the you know, the part that's like ba, 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 I show them that part. For speech ostinato, I sh ostinato. I show them the Harry Potter Puppet Pals, the mysterious ticking noise, because if you've never seen that, with all the different little ostinatos they do, like one for Snape, one for Dumbledore, one for Harry, all of that, and they're all spoken, so I do that. For rhythmic ostinato, I do the popular rhythmic pattern Bolero by Maurice Ravel. It's just this little two-bar uh, snare drum ostinato that repeats over and over throughout the song. And then for body percussion, I do uh, the stomp stomp clap from We Will Rock You by Queen. And you actually can have this whole introductory ostinato slide video uh, in my free resource library, which I will put underneath here. It has a bunch of other free resources as well. So if you're interested in this introductory lesson, you can click catch it down there. And then we finish with practicing finding the ostinato with a video I found forever ago. It is The Muppets and it's to the song Habanera and there are three characters in it and I have them pay attention to who is doing the ostinato, who's doing the melody, and then there is one character that is doing something else and we call it like the sprinkle of the music, like the solo of the music because it's not, it's like only a one-time thing. And so then they have fun watching that and they think it's hilarious and we watch that a couple of times. And then that is all that I have for the first day. And so that is what we do to identify ostinato. And like I said, this this lesson will be in my free resource library if you're interested in just having the base lesson. 
Then from there we go into lesson two. Typically I will do a different le one lesson a day and on lesson two we go through melodic ostinato. So first I ask them and I remember if they know what an ostinato is and of course they do and then we talk all about melodic ostinatos today and how those are rhythmic ostinatos but basically they add pitch, a combination of high and low sounds. And I give them a couple examples of melodic ostinatos and I'm not going to go through these with you. I'm sure you can think of some melodic melodic ostinatos. I cannot talk today. And then after they've seen a couple examples, we practice creating our own melodic ostinatos. So, but first in order to do that, they need to actually be able to practice singing an ostinato. And so I use, um, Liza Jane, I think, or yeah, I sing Liza Jane while they do the pattern over and over. I have them do do, so, do, 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 so, do, 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 and then I sing like Liza Jane. Actually, no, I don't sing Liza Jane. I sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and I already tested that that works. So while they're doing that, I'm singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and they're seeing what an ostinato is. So then after we've practiced that all together, I have them create their own melodic ostinatos, and they get into groups of two, and they have to create an eight-beat ostinato, and I have a worksheet for that and we talk through it. So first they create their eight beat rhythm giving using rhythms that they know in class. And so you could even post on the board the only rhythms you want them to use. Then they have to choose their melodic notes. Are they gonna use soul? Are they gonna use me? Whatever they've learned up to this point in your music room they can use. And then third, they have to put them together and practice. And bonus points if they play it on the xylophone. So for this activity, I do have a worksheet that I will pop on the screen really quick so you can see what it looks like. But basically when they're working in their groups, they call me over once they've finished and completed all the tasks and they have to be able to sing their hand signs and do their, their pattern for me, their eight beat pattern. And then if they would like, and we still have time, I allow them to take it to the barred instruments and they can try playing it on the xylophones. And then they can perform it at the end of the class if we have enough time. And that actually worked really well. Some classes opt out of doing the melodic, like, the uh, barred instruments part and that's totally fine. I just want the written worksheet to see that they understand it. But some really enjoyed the challenge and then they were able to present it to the class and we had a really great time with it. And so I allow them to do that worksheet and it is a super fun time and an easy way to practice learning melodic ostinato with your students. And in lesson three, once again, we always review what an ostinato is. And then today we are talking all about speech ostinatos, which are rhythmic ostinatos, but they must include a speech component as well. And and once again, I give a couple of examples of speech ostinatos, and like I tell you, it was really hard to find ostinatos in all the different types, but <laughs> that's why I did the work for you in these slides. And then we add some speech ostinatos to a popular folk song that we know. I just use Apple Tree, but you can use any folk song that you want to do if you need to change this. And so I make some patterns up for them to say. So like one part of the class will say, Apple, Apple, Apple Tree. And then I have another ostinato. Eventually I have three of them going at once. So I have another group doing pig, apples, pig, apples. And then I have one more group going apples, apples. And then they're all going at once. And so there are three different ostinatos happening and I split them into three and I'm singing apple tree and I let them switch and try the different parts out. And then we're able to see if they're able to do multiple ostinatos, speech ostinatos all at once. And then once we've practiced that, it's time for them to write their own speech ostinato. And so basically, I put a couple of songs on the board that they know, and they have to add two different four beat speech ostinatos to it. So they have a worksheet for this once again, and we talk over how they choose their rhythms first, and then they think of words that fit the song. So if they pick the song Bee Bee Bumblebee, they could use like buzz, bumble, bee, busy, honey, hive, flying, that sort of deal. And then third, they must put them together and practice. So maybe their pattern for that song is busy, busy, B B. And they grab a worksheet, they find a partner once again, and they get to work. And so they're just making two speech ostinatos. And I give examples, I have examples on the board, I have examples in the worksheet. So I put the example side on the board and I basically say, please don't copy this, make your own patterns. And then that has really helped having that example on the board. I don't get nearly as many questions because the example is on the board. So that is how to do speech ostinato for lesson three. Then in lesson four, you know, we're gonna start with, do you know what an ostinato is? And then we're moving on to rhythmic ostinatos. And rhythmic ostinatos use different rhythm patterns to create the ostinato. Once again, you know the drill. I'm gonna give them a couple examples. I give them at least two in each one. Some get three. It just depends on which ostinatos I found harder to find examples of. And then we practice using rhythm sticks to play a rhythmic ostinato in a popular classical song. And so I use the song Mars by Gustav Holst. And the pattern is hamburger patty on a bun, hamburger patty 
patty on a bun. Hamburger patty on a bun. Yes, it's in 5-4, but it's still a pattern that repeats over and over and over again throughout the song if you listen to it. And so then we try that with the song with our rhythm sticks, and then we try creating a rhythmic ostinato to a popular song to the song Happy by Pharrell Williams. And so I give an example of an ostinato that we could use on our rhythm sticks throughout the whole song. And then they try to think of some as a group that we could try to perform together. And I show them the rhythms they can choose from. I tell them it can only be up to four beats long. And then we do it on the screen and I have Google Slides where they can drag and drop rhythms. And so I just put a bunch of rhythms. And so you raise your hand and we drag and drop it onto the lines and we try it out and we see if it works. And then if it does, we can try another rhythmic ostinato. And you can just try as many as you want until you feel satisfied that they understand how to create a rhythmic ostinato and add it to the song Happy by Pharrell Williams or whatever song you want to pick. I just used that because that was an easy example. But that is lesson four for rhythmic ostinatos. And then in lesson five, once again, we say what an ostinato is and we talk about body percussion ostinatos, which are where you create the ostinatos using sounds that your body makes like claps, snaps, stomps, etc. And of course, once again, I give examples of body percussion ostinatos and I don't have too many for that. That was a little tricky to find. But then we practice adding some body percussion to popular music and we use the song Respect by Aretha Franklin and I created a body percussion uh, activity that you can do with this with stomps, claps, snaps, and pats. And we have different parts and I teach them the introduction, the verses, the chorus, all of that. And then we try putting all of our ostinatos together to the song Respect by Aretha Franklin and it's a super fun time. And then that's basically the gist. So there's not necessarily worksheets for each round but they are experiencing how to do these and make them in some way. So like they're making a melodic one, they're making a speech one, they're practicing doing a group rhythmic session with me, and then they are actually experiencing a body percussion ostinato performance by practicing and preparing for the respect by Aretha Franklin one. And that is the fifth lesson of this ostinato unit. So like I said, this project, this unit honestly took me forever to make because I wanted to make it really nice. I wanted it to be an easily an easy way for you to introduce ostinatos to your students and have them actually remember. And my students do still remember all the different ostinatos. So this unit has really helped them. If you are interested in getting a taste of what this unit is like, I have placed the introductory lesson only into my free resource library that you can click by subscribing to my email. The link will be underneath here and then you will get an email from me like once a week and you get the free resource library. So if you're interested in that, opt in. And then if you want to get the other four units, so you want to get melodic speech, rhythmic, and body percussion ostinatos, you can purchase the whole unit as a whole on my TPT store. I will link to it underneath down here. There is also a blog post that further explains all of this. If you're interested in that, that comes out on Thursday. My videos always come out before my blog post. So if you want more information, check it out on Thursday. And that is my ostinato unit. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you are able to teach ostinato to your students if you've been struggling with how to do it in a proper way. This is the best way that worked for me. And with that being said, I will see you in next week's video where I'm going to be talking through my favorite movement activities for the older grade levels, grades three through five. A couple weeks ago, we talked about my favorite movement activities for the younger grades, K through two. So it's only fair that we also have one for three through five. And so with that, I will see you next Monday. Bye.